In this video, we're going to talk about what table functions are in DAX. We're going to look at how to use them and what kind of use cases to use them for. We're also going to look at some of my top table functions that I use on a regular basis. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So starting with the basics, table functions are simply functions in DAX that return a table. A function essentially is a set of instructions that you use in DAX. A simple example would be the divide function, where you use the function to divide two sets of numbers and to return to you the result of it. The difference is that the divide function returns a single value, or what we call a scalar value, whereas the table function returns a multiple sets of values as a table. The first clue that you will have is what it says on the return value section of the documentation. Any function that returns a table is a table function, essentially. Another clue that you might have is when you create a measure and using just the result of a table function, you'll get this error message. This is because a measure requires a single result whereas table function returns a table of results. Now, before I bore you with the details, let's start by looking at some examples of table functions. So before we get into that, let's start by introducing you to this data set that we're working with today. It's so the Northwind data sets is a fictional company that sells goods internationally. And in this data set, we have a few tables. We have uh, information about different orders that have been made, uh, how much they were sold for, what products were in those orders, who ordered them, and the categories of those products. You will notice that we have them in separate tables and their relationships are already set up for us, so we don't really need to worry too much about that because that won't be the topic for this video. So let me just delete this one and we can start. If we go back here, I've also created a measure here, total sales, which we will use for our visualizations here. Total sales, which is a simple measure calculating the sales by multiplying the quantity to the unit price. Now, let's say I want to create a new table based on the categories table and the total sales. Two of my favorite functions that I like to use are add columns and select columns. I covered these two functions in a separate video, but essentially this lets you build a new table based on its original columns and at the same time add your new ones. This is what the documentation says about the add columns function. It says it adds calculated columns to a given table or table expressions. You need to give it a table where it needs to be based off, and then a combination of name and expression, which will be your new calculated columns. You'll notice that add columns is a table function because you will see that on the return value, it says it returns a table with all its original columns and the added ones that you have identified. So let's have a look at adding the add columns as a table into our Power BI report. So instead of creating a measure, we'll instead try to create a new table. So we'll go to the data view here and under calculations, new table. This will open up the formula bar for us, but instead of a scalar value, we'll need to use something that returns a table. So we'll name this one category sales, and we'll say add columns. For our table, we want to use the categories table because that's what we want to group or add our new expressions in. And then we need to add now our new columns that we want to add. So in this case, we want to add the total sales, which in this case, we'll just, just name this one sales. And the expression is we've already created already is the total sales. We close that. And there we go. So what you can see from here, first of all, is that the categories table, if you go back to the categories table, it has two columns, category ID and category name. 
both get added into this new table that we have written. And on top of that, there is a new column called sales, which we've created up here. We've defined what the column name is and also the values in each of those rows, which is the total sales for each of the categories. But let's say you want to have a bit more control over the columns that you will add in this new table, and maybe you don't want to have category ID, or maybe you just want to change the category name here to just say category. An alternative for you to use is something called the select columns. Select columns, like the add columns, is a table function, so it returns a table. But instead of automatically importing every single column in the original table, you can actually define what you want to add here along with the names and the expressions. So uh, let me show you actually how that looks like. So let's say we want to get the same table except no category ID and no category name, well, the renamed category here. So we will follow the same thing that we've just done. So new table, we'll just name this one select columns. Select columns, so in the table, then we will define and say we want the categories table. And under the name, here we can define our name expression combinations. So we want the category name, so we'll name this one category, and then we'll simply just say, give me category name under category. And then you can keep going and going. So we'll say we'll add sales as well. And then for the result of it, it will be the total sales. If you hit enter, there we go. So the only columns that get shown in this virtual table is what you've defined in your DAX function. So when would you use table functions? So as you saw, the first reason is simply wanting to create a DAX table based on already existing tables. The second most common reason to use table functions is to control the filter context to affect a result of a calculation. A good example to look at is the sum x. Now, SUMX is a scalar function, so it's not the table function, and you can see in the return value, it returns a single value. But what you'll notice is that in its parameters, it asks for a table, which you can use to affect the value that it returns. So an example, if we want to create a measure which only sums up the total sales for beverages, let's say. So if we create a new measure here, New measure, beverages sales. So we'll use some X. And then in the uh, table parameter here, we will use a table function called filter that will be used and will affect the context of the expression that we will add later, which is the total sales. So we'll say filter the table where the category name is equals to bev beverages, like this. So that's your table function, and the expression that we want to evaluate is the total cells. So what this will do now, and just to preview how and what this does, so first I'll just show you the total cells for each of the categories. You can see for beverages is 286,000 pounds, now, if we drag beverage sales by itself, you will see that that will be the same and only is getting the total sales for the beverages category. The next one that I use frequently is the summarize function, which essentially is a way to group data using DAX. Now, there are many ways to group your data in Power BI and summarize is simply just one of them. So let's say you want to group your total sales by customer's country. So whoever ordered made the order, you want to group them by total sales. So we want to create a table for that, let's say. So we're gonna go back and create this new table once more. Uh, total sales by country. We'll use summarize here. And under the table, we want to use order details. And then we want to group this by country from our customers table. And then we want to have the expression that we, we want to show in this table. So in this case, we want to use the sales. 
the column name would be sales, the expression would simply be the total sales measure. If you now hit enter, you will see that it generates a table for us that shows all the different countries of all our customers and then added up all those sales split by country. The last one that I use is called Union, which is, if you're familiar with SQL, is basically the same thing. It appends two tables on top of each other. The thing to make sure here is that both tables must have the same columns for it to work. So the same number of columns, same column names, same data types. So if you're using and combining virtual tables, I'd be using select columns to make sure that the column names and the column numbers are exactly the same. So uh, as an example, so summarized by itself returns a table, but let's say I want to add something beneath this, so another list here. Uh, and in this case, we're just going to copy this code all together and we will wrap this with a union, which will, if I write union here, so you will add your tables. So table one, which is our summarized, and then table two, like this. And you will see that it will add table one and table two on top of each other. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with the table functions in DAX with regards to how to use them and what to use them for. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.